OK, we're going to go through creating some different types of component. So we're going to start with just drawing a box. And we're going to add some connection points to this box. So to add connection points, we're going to go to Create New Text. And I'm going to put some text in there of A1. And in the Attributes, we're going to go down to Connection and double click to assign connection as being the attribute type. I'm going to put it as being center justified for now. This is not an IEC standard. I'm going to put that as being zero. I'm going to put one on top. Change the text. Notice the text box stays open. Can kind I of click on the bottom? And then I'm just going to put an extra one, X1 on the top and X2 to the right. So the text on the top, I want to put inside the box. I'm going to select it, right click and choose mirror. Mirror along this line. So I'm drawing a, a line along there. And I'm going to create this as a component symbol. So I'm going to window around it, right click and choose block. And I'm going to go to component. Click on OK. I'm going to put in there identification. I'm going to put in there K. Click OK. And this is coming as a component symbol. The software automatically adds the product, a description field where you can put example of what it's doing. And it also puts in the type, but it automatically sets it as hidden. So you can set it as single line if you want to. Once you've saved it, you can also change the information there. But this is a component symbol. You can see the information at the top of the properties uh, box component properties for component. I can right click in a bit of space in the symbols panel, add a new symbol database. Right click on that new symbol database and add a new folder. And then to save the symbol, I can drag and drop. and place it in there. Uh, be aware if you click on electrical and on the top right on connections, you will see those connection points with yellow being the first one and magenta being the subsequent ones. They will be assigned in the order that you've placed them. Just moving them around will not change that order. You'd have to remove them, copy them back in or cut and paste to put them in a different order. Now with a component, if I go into my favorites and I place in a contact, it doesn't pick up the name of this device here. So if I click on DB, it still doesn't pick it up. So the component is not designed to cross-reference. Even if I force it to have the right product, when I click OK, there is no referencing going on between these two. One enhancement we can make, however, is if we take this one, right-click and choose Copy, and right click and choose paste. If I paste it down a second time, it gives it the next available identification. If I double click and change it and call it K1, then I get a message. This component already exists, so it warns me it already exists. It's a component and it says, do you want to combine this component with the already existing one? Now it's important to be aware of this. If I click on yes, in the project database, there becomes just one entry for these two symbols. So if I say yes, if I put a part number on here and call it part one, if I look on this one, it has the same part. And again, if I change the descriptions, they both change. So this is within the project database, only one element. If I go to control Z, and go back to here where these are separate. If I double click and say this is K1 again, this time if I say no, it still keeps the same identification. But the difference now, if I put a part in here, it will keep prompting me by the way. If I choose no, it will keep asking me, are you sure you don't want to make these one component in the database? And you'll notice in this one, the type is not being displayed and they have 
separate type information for both of those. So each time I go into those, it's going to keep asking me. And if I choose no, it keeps those as being separate. Just to have a quick look in the database under view components, you will see there are two entries in there, K1, K1, with two different part numbers. So just be aware of that. With components, you have those two options. If I also want to keep track of those symbols, then if I go to create new text, control T, I can put in there a question mark. I'm going to make it right justified. And in the component information, I'm going to scroll all the way down to cross reference. And it used to be called sheet cell reference in V8R2. So now it's called cross reference. When we double click, we can place that text underneath and then right click. And if I, in fact, I'm going to copy that. I should have done that in the first place. I'm going to choose the second copy with a start and an end point. And now if we select the text, right click and add that to the block and then click on the block to say it's that one we're going to add it to. Same one with this one. Add to block. And now if I double click and choose OK, it says, do you want to combine these? I'm going to say yes this time. And now we see a cross reference between these two. So they are components, but they can cross reference. So we haven't changed the symbol type. It's still just a component, but they now cross reference. So the next symbol we're going to look at is a component which is already expecting to cross reference. So what I'm going to do is take this existing component symbol, copy and paste. I'm then going to go to explode it. And notice it has this additional piece of text on there. It's a little dot underneath. I'm just going to choose right click and move and just move it down a bit. If we select it and click on edit text, we'll see that that's a piece of text for the cross reference. If we window around the symbol, right click and choose block. This time, instead of component, we're going to choose component with auxiliary contacts. And when we click OK, it looks the same. It's given it identification. Only this time, it's allowed to accept auxiliary contacts. So if I place one in, straight away, it's got the same product. If I click on DB, it appears in the search. So clicking OK, both are reciprocated. Both have a cross-reference to say where each of the others is positioned. So component with auxiliary contact allows the placement without any part numbers of any number of auxiliary type symbols. These are contact type symbols. Now an important thing to be aware of here is that auxiliary type symbols don't have to look like an open or closed contact. We could take this symbol here, copy it, paste it, just down here, and then we could explode it, and we could window round and choose to block it, this time as an auxiliary type symbol. That's anywhere from contact, changeover, all the way down to contact unspecified. So these are all auxiliary type symbols. If I click on contact unspecified, so I'm not saying it's an open or closed or main or changeover, click OK, and now it comes up with the possibility of linking it back to K2. And we're getting the cross references in the wrong place. I'm just going to turn off the part number as well. But you can see that this symbol is referencing back to the main one. So although they look the same, the software acknowledges that this is a contact unspecified. So just be aware that that's possible. The next type of symbol we're going to look at if I take the first one, right click and choose copy and paste. And we're going to explode it. And again, window round it and block it. So we're using the same graphics. We're going to block it this time as not a component with auxiliary contacts, but also with a cross reference. So with a contact cross. 
Now, in the basic, standard, and advanced, in the standard um, templates, project templates, the default way of cross-referencing is always across. So we have normally open and normally closed. And when we place an open or closed type symbol, so contact NO, for instance, when we click on OK, it shows up in that column. We also have the additional cross-reference we placed manually. Now we could right-click in a bit of space, select single element, and then we can click on that within the block without exploding it, and then hit delete on the keyboard. We can also change that cross-reference in the standard and advanced levels by right-clicking on the circuit diagram, choosing properties, and going to the coil section. In here we have the option of use the mirror symbol or use the cross, and both are selected, but we haven't told the software where the mirror symbols are. Underneath there is a folder. We can search by clicking on the buttons on the right, scroll all the way down to where it says types, and we can select the mirrors folder. You can go into it and see those symbols, but these are the mirror symbols, the miniature versions of those symbols, which it's looking to use to display the contacts. And they will display whatever text is in there. So if you put in additional information, then those will display on the cross-referencing. So this was component with auxiliary contacts with a contact cross. The position of this cross-reference is defined. If we go to electrical and bottom potential, so I call that zero volt, you'll see that appears just above the cross-reference. And that's intended to be the, the way it works. If we right-click in a bit of space on the page and go to page properties, we will see there is a setting here for position of top potential, which is 20 millimeters from the top of the page, and position of the bottom potential, which is 50 millimeters from the bottom of the page. We then have a distance from the potential to the contact reference. So from where the potential appears, 10 millimeters below is where the cross reference is inserted. So if we wanted that to be further down the page, if we say, set that to 20, then whenever we place in a, a device, if I copy this and paste it, and then I don't see a cross reference until I've actually used the symbol. So if I place one in now, I see this now 20 millimeters below that reference. Now you can manually move these, but you will find it sometimes it will just jump back up when it gets refreshed. So just be aware that you have these page settings. The page settings, when you right click and go to page properties, these are saved when you save your page template. So if you remember, you go to file, save as page template, and that saves your page template with nothing else drawn on the page with all of its correct settings. If we want the cross-reference to appear at a different position, then we can take a symbol. Let's start with a component symbol. We'll choose copy. I'm going to zoom in a bit and paste. And remember, this is a component symbol, so it's not expecting any cross-referencing. In the standard and advanced level packages, we can now go to the commands panel under home make sure that your commands property or panel for commands is available. And on a circuit diagram page, you should be able to go into circuit diagram utilities. And once you've selected the symbol, and it's important to pre-select it, then double click on the command add ref. We now get a series of options as to how the cross-reference should be inserted from a particular point with the red dot, whether it's rotated, so I'm going to choose for this one, I want the cross reference to appear to the right of it, centered. And I want it just to the right. So I'm actually going to select it by going to select point and say I want it to appear just there. And then once I've selected those two things, the alignment and a selection point, I go to insert contact definition. Now again, nothing seems to have changed, but when I double click, I can see this is now a component with auxiliary contacts with the contact cross. So it's changed the symbol type. If I go into symbols, place in a normally open contact, 
and now I start to see and in fact again I've got this F6 select this I'm going to delete that one because it's a duplicate but as soon as I start placing in these contacts the cross-reference appears here and again if I drag and drop and save that then whenever I bring that in as soon as I start using contacts and if I place in I know I wouldn't mix these but if I go into electrical and automation relay contacts change if I choose a change of a contact for instance and give that then I see that information appear in the cross-referencing information so we started with a component where there was no real cross-referencing we can force it to have a cross-reference with another component but other than that there's no real cross-referencing we could then say that it's a component with auxiliary contacts we can then say it's a component with auxiliary contacts and with the contact cross-reference symbol and then we can say use the add ref command to specify where the cross-reference is going to appear.